You know, I was playing Dark Souls 3 one day and couldn't help but wonder, this game is really easy. So, why don't we make it a little harder? That's right, today we're going to beat Dark Souls 3 with only Ferrandart. The rules are as follows. The only things that are allowed for damage are our fists and a spell with the name Ferrandart in the name. We can use rings, non-damaging items, and anything else to help us achieve our mission. This will not be a DLC run, although I will be killing all the bosses, because DLC bosses are just something else entirely. Without further ado, let's introduce you to our hero. We create our hero, sorcerer class, and we make him blue, just like a Ferrandart. Now, Farron, our hero, knows that Ferrandart is the most powerful spell in the game, but unfortunately, he can't grab it till Firelink Shrine, so he has to punch his way through Cemetery of Ash. As without Ferrandart, there's not much he can do. He gets to the first bonfire and eventually to Eudex. Our hero knows he can parry Eudex very consistently. So let's see what we're working with. 28 damage. Alright then. With our hero's biggest challenge down, he moves forward unfaltering. We make our way into Firelink, and finally obtain Ferrandart. This is where our hero's journey really begins. We run through High Wall, and onto Vort of the Boreal Valley. What are we working with here? 7 damage per. Our hero tries anyway. Despite the initial failure, our hero tries again. And again. And again. In fact, our hero tries for over four hours. Eventually, he opts into healing, grabbing the Estus Shard from the high wall. He then sells all his materials just to buy one Ember. This gives us one more shot with increased health. After reallotting our Estus, our hero embarks on his single attempt at Fort. Let's see how this goes.
what was undoubtedly our hero's hardest challenge to date, we move on to the Undead Settlement. We find Yol of Lundor, and then farm his free levels. We put these points into Vigor, just so we don't get one shot. We sprint for the Undead Bone Shard, as this will be massive for determining our total Farandart damage output. It is time for the Curse Rod at Greatwood. Although our hero has never been very good at this fight in particular. We do very little damage here, only 6 damage per Farandart. We do make it to phase 2 after about an hour of attempts, but it doesn't go much further. And honestly, our hero's getting kind of discouraged at this point, so we opt to move forward anyway. We make it to the Road of Sacrifices and cheese the Outrider Knight from behind the door. We gather Orbeck here. He's going to be a very important asset in this run. It's time to take on the Crystal Sage. We end up doing more damage to the Crystal Sage than we did to someone like Vort, but the sheer onslaught of attacks and way you have to dodge them just leads this fight to be insanely difficult, especially at this point. We do make it pretty far on our first attempt, but get comboed. This really frustrates our hero, and we just opt to move on yet again. We cheese the Exiles, and sprint through Farron Keep, grabbing the Undead Bone Shard. We do grab the Crown of Dusk here, as well as Sage Scroll. Bonus points if you know where I'm going with this. We give the scroll to Orbeck. Among the spells he has, he has Great Farandart. Now, Great Farandart, while requiring a whopping 23 intelligence to use, is technically a Farandart and would be better than our current. So, after upgrading and allotting Estus, selling everything we own, we still don't have enough to purchase Great Farandart, let alone have the requirements to wield it. So we head back to Farron Keep and punch some books. We then loot the stray demon, running past and expertly dodging. Our hero then sells everything he's just gathered levels up barely to the requirement, but we still can't purchase it. So we make a dumb decision, and our hero opts to sell embers in order to buy the spell. Our hero decides to go back to the Curse Rod of Greywood. He gets really far in his first attempt, but does get grabbed and fails. The next attempt, though, the Curse Rod of Greywood goes down. Great Farandart is really shaping up to be such a great utility. Our hero then decides Crystal Sage is going to go down. It's a lot easier this time. We do around 16 damage per dart, but we die. Undeterred, our hero tries again. And again. And again. After all these attempts, but no success, we have but one option left. We have to go to the Abyss Watchers. Is this more doable? Yes, surprisingly. Now let's see if our hero can take it on. I do a 
things out of hand. I've been through a lot and I learned everything I can. They be looking, but I'm never found. Going where I'm not allowed. When in doubt, I do everything to take it slow. I know it can take a toll. I don't want to pay it though. If I want, then I make it so. Lately, I feel like nobody understands. They be talking to me, but I just don't give a damn. Cause I'll never follow you. Yeah, I'll never follow you. Only looking up like a flower bud. Like a tree that doesn't feel like it is tall enough. I keep climbing up. I don't want to jump. Don't believe in love. Gotta take a chance, I'm the only one who can May not even have a plan But I go, and I do my best to make it through I can never follow you, I would rather be recluse Make it simple when it's time to choose Maybe talking like I don't know where I am I'll be on my own and you know I don't need a plan I don't feel like anything I do is out of hand I've been through a lot and I learned everything I can They be looking but I'm never found Going where I'm not allowed When in doubt, I do everything to take it slow I know it can take a toll, I don't wanna pay it though If I want, then I make it so Lately, I feel like nobody understands They be talking to me, but I just don't give a damn Cause I'll never follow you Yeah, I'll never follow you I'm the only one Like the setting sun Like the soaring mist When the morning comes I don't wanna stay I don't wanna run I'll be on my way Cause I'm never done I feel like I've just begun I will never be in front All I wanna have is fun Every single day and month I will never quit When it's said and done I'm the only one I'm the only one So what a bottom days What a bottom days Maybe I don't change Maybe I don't change Like the setting sun Like the setting sun But I never fade But I never fade I've been growing cold I've been growing cold Running all the way Running all the way From the polar night From the polar night To the polar day They be looking but I'm never found Going where I'm not allowed When in doubt I do everything to take it slow I know we can take a toll I don't want to pay it though If I want then I make it so Lately I feel like nobody understands They be talking to me But I just don't give a damn Cause I'll never follow you Yeah, I'll never follow you They be talking like I don't know where I am I'll be on my own and you know I don't need a plan I don't feel like anything I do is out of hand I've been through a lot and I learned everything I can I'll never follow you With the Lord of Cinder felled, our hero feels completely unstoppable we make our way through the catacombs, largely uneventful, and take on Wolnir. And Wolnir goes down easy. We then go back to Firelink to nab the Estus Ring. And she's the Swordmaster. Because why not? Our hero thinks it's time to take on the Crystal Sage. We can't do anything else after all. Our first attempt gets really close, but unfortunately we lose. I have no doubt in my mind that our hero can take it on. Wait, where are you going? So for some reason I decided to go to the Smoldering Lake? Our hero shuts off the Ballista without trouble and tries to take on the old Demon King. That goes about as well as you'd expect at this stage. After wasting an ember and being thoroughly humbled, our hero decides to go right back to where he came. I still have no doubt in my mind that the Crystal Sage will go down. That sprinting Farron dart, the Crystal Sage goes down, honestly no issue. We then run through the Cathedral of the Deep, grab an undead bone shard, get invaded by Kirk, which takes about 5 minutes to dispel, really lacking in damage on NPCs here. Taking on the Deacons. 
Our hero was initially very worried. How are we gonna damage them? How are we gonna damage them? It may seem bleak, but with enough time, we do eventually make it to Phase 2. Phase 2 is not nearly as tough. After a long fight and a lot of backstabs to prevent curse, we do take down the Deacons, and can progress to Irithyll. We make fun of the dog who has not killed the Deacons and does not use Farandart get chased down by the dog, and head on over to the profaned capital. Now, Yorm wasn't a challenge to our hero. Not in terms of difficulty, just in terms of endurance. Yorm has a lot of health, and since we can't use the Storm Ruler, this fight is going to have to be near perfect. We only ended up taking two attempts but we ended up trying for about 50 minutes, which means 25 minutes per attempt, just about. On our first try, we do just barely go down right at the end, as you can see, heartbreaking. But our hero really knows he can kill the Lords of Cinder. So on our second attempt, we get a nice stagger, and eventually, Yorm the Giant is felled by nothing other than Farandart. Back in Irithyll now, our hero is going to take on Pontiff Sullivan. We drink some soup and grab the magic clutch ring. This is the boost to our magic. With this newfound build, Pontiff is still going to be incredibly tough due to his short sword dealing magic damage. Despite this, our hero tries. And he tries again. And he tries again. One more time for good measure. Our hero fells Pontiff Sullivan surprisingly quickly, only taking about a day. We kill a mimic for a useless item that nobody cares about and make it to Anar Lundo, intending to kill Aldrich. Now we reel out our Estus due to Aldrich's magic resistance, and on our first try, he actually goes down. It's about time we take on our biggest challenge, the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Now, on our first attempt, we do make it pretty far. In fact, we realize something. We can use the environment to our advantage here. See, Dancer normally is a very dodge-heavy fight, leaving us little stamina to cast Farandart. But with the geometry, we're free to do so, and she goes down like that. The time has come for us to take on the Consumed King himself, Osiris. Let's see how much damage our hero does. This is doable. Our hero can do this. Ignorant slaves, how quickly you forget. Our hero is discouraged and takes on Lothric Castle. Now it's time for Dragon Slayer armor. Now, this boss can actually one-shot our hero, and so we have to be extremely careful. Eventually though, with enough patience, he too goes down without a fight. Our hero then unlocks a fast route to Lorien. Let's see how doable this boss is right now. 
This spot marks our grave, but you may rest here too, if you like. I'll be the first to say it. Our hero couldn't kill Lorien and Lothric with just Farandar. Despite days of attempts, this boss is just too tough. Whenever Lorien goes down, we have a couple seconds to capitalize on depleting Lothric's health pool. And despite many close attempts, we have to drain Lorien's health bar so many times we just don't have enough Estus. And so I'm sorry to say, no, it is not possible to beat Dark Souls 3 using Farron Dart only. Oh, never mind. We did it. All Lords of Cinder have been taken down with only Fair Dart. And so now we have the cleanup. Osiris goes down on our first try after killing Lothric and Lorien. Nothing can stop us now. But for Gundir, our hero wants to do something special. He decides to relive the way he started, and parry him. Over. And over. And over. This time we get extra darts in every parry, instead of a measly 28 damage per parry. We've even learned to parry side swipes. If anything, this just shows the growth of our hero. With this solid victory, we go to the Archdragon Peak and take out one of the few remaining bosses, the Ancient Wyvern, without any trouble. Now, our hero thought the Nameless King would bring trouble, but he didn't. It goes down on the first try, despite a relatively rough battle. Now, it's the penultimate fight. The soul of Cinder. The amalgamation of everyone who's linked to the flame in the past. No way he can go down to a Ferrandart, right? Well, it doesn't take much. Just some determination. And Gwyn goes down as well. Or at least his incarnation. Farron, utterly disgusted by the state of the world falling to just a Ferrandart decides to let the flame die. Ashen One, hearest thou my voice still? And so, with pride and confidence, our hero can say, yes, it is possible to beat Dark Souls 3 with nothing but a Ferrandart.